right, welcome back to the Art for OUR uh, YouTube channel. The inspiration for this project comes from um, a place in Mexico called the Crystal Caves. I'm one of those National Geographic uh, or Science Channel junkies. And I remember, I remember when they um, announced they had discovered this cave. Uh, apparently it's connected to a mine, so it's super deep. Um, down in the crust of the earth and they uh, were so surprised by this thing because it was so unusual. You can see in that picture there's some crystals the size of cars, you know, small houses. Uh, it's really hot in this mine and it's uh, almost impossible to stay in there without um, these life support suits they've developed. And even with those, uh, you, you can't stay there for very long. Uh, people have been known to get quite sick and, and be ill, almost die there because of the extreme temperatures and whatnot. But uh, just a beautiful place they discovered. Um, it always intrigues me uh, when they find something like that. You know, what else is out there? So anyway, one of my favorite things in nature uh, that I wanted to kind of duplicate. So this has to be one of my more favorite projects. Anytime I get to take a hammer to something and beat the crap out of it, I'm in a good mood. <laughs> so I made these sheets of um, of resin and the idea was to break them up, but as you can see there, they're super flexible even after they've cured for a number of days. So what I did is I stuck them in the freezer for a couple of days and then they uh, became brittle enough that I could break them up. I wasn't sure exactly how this was going to turn out. I, uh, as you can see me working, this stuff was probably quarter inch to half inch thick in places, thinner in others. I was actually looking for shards of glass initially, but realizing it was thicker, I started to think uh, it would have a different look. And you know what? It turned out pretty cool. So I'm quite happy with this one. I stuck these containers down as backdrops because I was shooting this stuff all over the house. <laughs> so. <laughs> Need something catching it. Um, the wood portion of this project is a bit of cherry tree. One of my patients donated a whole bunch of cherry tree logs, which are one of my favorite. Uh, they have some really lovely grain on it. Of course, one of the challenges is uh, a lot of times by the time I get one of these, they're already cured and cracked, which is fine. It kind of makes it... Uh, a little more authentic I suppose and because I'm dunking the whole thing in resin it doesn't really matter because the uh, cracks are filled with resin and become super strong with that approach I've yet to have one fall apart and uh, and be dangerous on the lathe which of course is something you have to be careful with you don't want to use really bad pieces of wood because it's quite dangerous so I wasn't sure how this thing was going to turn out exactly. Um, I figured it looked like a geode. Um, but as I got closer to the end, I realized it looked more like that crystal cave I liked so much. So I certainly sometimes realize what it looks like after I'm done with the project or as I'm completing it. So it doesn't always work out the way I planned. But in this case, uh, it was pretty close to my target. Uh, one thing I tried a little different on this project was to follow the grain of the wood when I made my windows, which is something I love doing. Um, I use this carving disc. Um, these last forever. You can get a lot of project done. Um, they're, anytime you use a grinder to carve, it's somewhat dangerous. You need to know what you're doing. Um, I always wear long sleeve shirts and gloves, um, mainly because the force that these pieces of wood come off of here is incredibly painful. And even when I wear protective gear, I still have bruises and tiny little cuts. Uh, 
the biggest danger of course is kickback and so the key is to use the the front edge the bottom front edge of the grinder only if the top edge touches it it's going to jump back and get you so you have to be very careful with that these uh, 40 grit 60 grit sanding discs are incredibly useful um, they're powerful enough to carve with and they make short work of rough edges um, whereas before I used to struggle with it and take forever uh, if you can get the angle grinder in there it's super useful uh, Starbond is one of my sponsors and I use this dark CA um, glue on purpose I wanted the uh, crystals to have kind of a base that blended into the wood a little bit and actually I liked how that ended up turning out uh, kind of give it some more texture more more interest what's really awesome about this glue is when you use this accelerant that you slip on there which is really just acetone uh, there's a different type of it but this one's acetone um, the glue sets up in seconds so you have to be careful I've lost many a finger of a glove <laughs> as I'm going along but because it sets up so quickly um, I don't know how many pieces I glue on here but this only took like 30 minutes so it went really fast In hindsight, I wished I had used smaller pieces of the of the blue shards, um, just so that you could see between the two layers better. Um, it turned out really cool, but I, in hindsight, I, I would have been cool to have the top and the bottom look like they were floating all the way around, kind of detached. That would have been a, a cool look, but uh, I did end up with a whole bucket of this stuff that I didn't use, so... <laughs> We'll be doing 2.0 at some point, I'm sure. We've been having some really awesome uh, donations for Art for OUR come in recently. Uh, paintings and woodworking, knitting, um, all kinds of good stuff. We've had one of the better months since we started. I think people do a little bit of their Christmas shopping. So come on over to that site. The majority of the profit, uh, all of mine, 100% of the profit, but for some artists who are you know, struggling to maintain uh, 50 to 100 percent of the profit goes to, to Operation Underground Railroad. All right, I turned over a new leaf on this project. I decided I'm going to treat the wood beforehand, see if I couldn't cut down on the bubbles. And this is this resin's from a lumalite I had left over. One mistake I made was that the temperature in my garage is, is starting to drop. I'm in northern Utah, and it never gets below 55, 50 in my garage, but we're getting down there. And so resin is really thick, or at least this version is very thick. And and so it ended up really foamy because of the, because when you stir it, uh, it it's just so thick it was like honey. <laughs> so I was a little worried about that, sealing the wood appropriately. I don't think it soaked in as well as it could have because of how thick it was. But... Um, I wasn't shy about using a ton of it because I was determined to see if I could stop bubbles once and for all. The process didn't really work. I still had a lot of bubbles stream through and I'm not sure why. Uh, the more I think about this, the more I think that for you to successfully seal the wood you've got to completely seal every single crack and it's got to be airtight which probably is going to take multiple layers layers of resin which takes days and days which i don't always have so 
I'm gonna try something else next time uh, where I put it in my uh, uh, vacuum chamber and see if I can't get the resin to sink deeper into the wood when I do it. I've also had a lot of people recommend cactus juice for the same purpose. Um, so I don't know, I've got a few things to experiment with going into the future. One thing's for sure, uh, using the pressure or the uh, vacuum chamber really helps to get rid of the micro bubbles that show up in resin when you're when you're uh, uh, mixing it. So I love using this Tota boat. It's the Fathom Thick Set resin. They're one of my sponsors, and uh, I'm very grateful for that because resin's not cheap. Um, but they've made it possible for me to do uh, a lot of these projects that are bigger. They use a lot of resin, and uh, you can get a discount on their product products both with Starbon and total boat if, uh, if you use um, the code you'll find below in the description so with the vacuum chamber the way I've been doing it is there's a lever here that to control the level of pressure and so I let it foam up just as it reaches the top I drop the pressure again and the idea is we're just trying to get rid of all the bubbles and so they pop and they pop and I haven't counted here but it usually takes 30 40 minutes repeating this cycle many times until you get to the very end and it stops making bubbles because there's no more no more air in the resin kind of takes a long time so you see me sitting around my cell phone but that's that's the idea so that part of it i've really liked the micro bubbles story is no longer an issue unless there's a lot of moisture in the wood and it reacts with that or something else but this part i've liked I think next time I'm going to try to put my whole project right in the vacuum chamber. See if I can't work the air out of the wood. And every time you drop the pressure, hopefully the resin will work its way deeper and deeper into the wood. And so we'll see. I got a few things I want to try. I've really liked this casting technique using a container full of sand and then plastic foam, <clears throat> plastic sheeting around the outside. The reason I like doing this is it helps soak the entire project so cracks, all the cracks are filled. But also, I never seem to make the same project twice. <laughs> so I never, I, I could make a silicone mold, I suppose, but it would only be for one project, so hardly worth it. This way I can make a new mold every time that's custom. Uh, what I'm working on is the folds, you'll notice, um, the odder the shape, the more the folds in the sheeting you have and so you lose some resin in there uh, probably would be a good idea to hot glue those or something but I'm getting better and better at limiting the loss of resin and and that's awesome so slowly perfecting my techniques here I'm always on a pretty tight schedule and Sometimes when I have free time, I got to work and, and I want to work on a project. I just got to go for it. And I knew this resin had set up nicely where I cared. But for some reason on the bottom, the fatter in there, it was still jelly. <laughs> so, you know, I don't do it justice on the video. But when I started getting into it, chunks of this stuff was just flying around the office. Uh, the office. My, my uh, shop, I mean like somebody was shooting jelly across the room but so that was kind of a new experience in turning the money from the videos on youtube and the sale of my projects as well as the other artists who donate to art for our all goes to operation underground railroad Um, Operation Underground Railroad, they go around the world helping to fight child sex trafficking. It's a horrible subject, but it's a massive, massive problem around the world and lots of victims out there, so we're doing our best to fight back. So these guys go around, identify kids that are in trouble, free them, do sting operations, work with local government agencies, whatever it takes. Here's the jail shooting all over the place. Yeah, 
get them into adoption agencies or return to their families if they've been separated. One of the hardest things that I'm learning is that often families are involved. And so it's the aftercare is something that OUR is really focused on trying to perfect and get kids into a much better situation where they won't be sucked back into this evil world of trafficking. <clears throat> so you can imagine the whole process is very expensive, very time consuming. And that's where we donate our money that we earn from this project. So we're about to hit 30 grand, which is absolutely amazing. Could not do it without your help. Uh, ways you can help, simply watch videos, share them, um, buy the projects. I've got one or two left. Oh, they almost sell out every time, but I've got, I think I've got one left. The Pyracantha vase, I think, is the only one I've got besides this one. But there's about 70 other artists who have donated stuff. We've got a lot of things left over that are high quality, cool things. You can be a paid member of this channel. Um, a couple bucks a month, all of it goes to OUR. Uh, you can direct, directly donate to the fundraiser, which there's a link in the, in the um, description. There's also a fundraising link for the YouTube, YouTube channel itself. So anyway, spread the word, help us raise more money. It all goes for an amazing cause. We're about to hit Thanksgiving here in the United States. So if you celebrate that, have a happy Thanksgiving. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next project. And thank you so much for your support, guys.